listening to Neo Cash Radio. We discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ, Darren, and Pedro. The 10x debit card looks to handle any blockchain. The Bitcoin community forks over UASF. Bancor Protocol, BitCart drops Bitcoin in favor of Dash. All this and more on episode 210 here on Wednesday, June 7th, 2017. In the traditional markets, we have gold up to $1,287, silver's up to $17.56, oil's down to $45.78, and the Dow is up to 21,173 uh, points, and the 30-year Treasury yield is down to 2.84%. In the crypto markets, Bitcoin is up this week to $2,684. It's a big week for Bitcoin. And Litecoin is down to $29.11. Ethereum is up to $258. And Dash is up to $140. And this is totally my fault, JJ. Litecoin was actually up this oh, week. Okay. Yes. It's my fault. In our fault. show notes, we indicate whether it's up or down. And just a reminder, you can tune into Neocache every Wednesday night and hear all of our flubs. Don't want to miss a single moment of awesome Neocache content, including special episodes and bonus interviews. Subscribe to our podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Podcast Addict, and more. That's a mouthful. All right. Well, starting out, um, there's Big Reek, uh, the, the prices are are huge. Now, is this the, the all-time high for Ethereum, I think? Yeah, I mean, as far I, as our I, show is, I don't yeah. think we've ever reported it. This well, high. we've been on now, the Bitcoin, air longer than Ethereum. That's true, and so uh, that's yeah, true. It's the all time high. It did touch like two sixty seven. Well, yeah, that's all. And Bitcoin high. It hit three thousand at some point. I don't know if it was a U.S. market, but the crypto is huge, and we'll talk more about Bitcoin later in the show. But we're starting out with the Ethereum tokens once again, and uh, so ten X is a a Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dash, debit card. Yeah, all of that and more. We've talked about token card and Monaco's proposed Ethereum and token-based debit cards, but 10X is ahead of the pack. Having already laid the foundation for a beta-tested debit card, 10X is looking beyond Bitcoin. The 10X wallet and card is ready and supports Bitcoin, Ethereum, ERC-20 tokens, and Dash with plans to add more. Naturally, the 10X team is having a token sale at the end of this month. Oh, yeah. The white paper draft has a goal of 100,000 Ether, currently about, what is that, uh, $26 million, 20, about, roughly $26 million. The uh, token is going to be called Pay, P-A-Y, and the uh, it will be launched on the Ethereum blockchain. Tokens will be distributed at a rate of 200 Pay per 1S and 50% of all the tokens we sold at the token sale. 29% of tokens are reserved for distribution to the public over the next four years and business development. The remaining 10% of tokens will be held by the company and then 10% used to pay the founders, employees, and development team. Now, given the recent history of token sales lasting minutes or even seconds, 10x plans to do something new by having a minimum sale length of one hour, giving <laughs> most people a better chance. I'm sorry. <laughs> one hour. <laughs> one hour minimum. <laughs> this could be good for getting the tokens in more hands, but it could also see a massive influx of funding. The economics of this are interesting to consider. If a few whales come along and buy large amounts, that won't stop the masses from buying small amounts. If a speculator is simply buying to flip the coin ASAP, there may be far more available and thus less demand than is typically present after a flash sellout. Well, 10X has some notable investors, including Vitalik himself and Bo Shen from Fenwushi Capital. They have already signed Visa and MasterCard strategic partnerships. The card offers some perks as well. Cardholders will earn the pay tokens when they use the card. This is part of the tokens that's being held in reserve. And uh, the pay token holders themselves, people who have the tokens, will receive 05 or half a percent of the total payment volume on the 10X platform. So you're divided up amongst all the token holders. So you, you basically use the card and you earn pay tokens by using the card. And then you get paid from those pay tokens by other people and, and, and yourself ostensibly using that card. It's sort of like a feedback loop. Um, hmm. I think the biggest part of this this paragraph, if you will, is the fact that Vitalik is involved. So I expect yeah, I was... a lot of money to come from the the early Ethereum crowd. Right? Has, has there been a date for the uh, token sale? There's no sale? date set yet. Hey, send me one of those cards. I'll get some pay tokens. Now, here, uh, the, the plan is for any blockchain asset integrating with the 10X card through commit payment channels. Commit stands for cryptogra cryptographically secure off-chain multi-asset instant transaction. The white paper describes how part funds 
uh, are part of the funds raised during the token sale will be used to hold reserves of numerous coins to provide liquidity. So they're basically creating a uh, a payment uh, liquidity a liquidity provider, which I'll talk about in a second. Hmm. So going into commit, I, I was like, well, what is this commit? You know, of course. Well, commit stands for uh, it's a super blockchain network that allows for instant transactions, which are enforced using off-chain smart contracts. It leverages payment channels and hashed time lock contracts across chains to solve the problem of double spend attacks without requiring a settlement onto the underlying blockchains. Commit's connectivity is provided by liquidity providers who operate on one or more blockchains acting as payment hubs and nodes on a single chain and market makers in a decentralized network for cross-chain asset conversions. What? Yes. So basically... The 10x people, uh, they're, they're going to be a liquidity provider on, on the commit network. And by having access to this network, they can basically take anything that can connect to commit. Bitcoin, Dash, Ethereum, well, Waves, NXT. I mean, anything really that can connect. Well, color me skeptical, Vitalik. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, so this, I mean, this is really big and this is the, so the token sale is happening later this month. We're not giving you advice to buy or sell anything because that's not what we do. I'm simply informing you about things that catch my eye. And and this is a very interesting one from the sole reason that they are already operating. So 10 X is, is already finished their beta testing round. I don't want to have a pay coin at all. Pay token, whatever it is. Okay. Until I have one of these cards. Okay. And I use it and they give me the pay that's what I want to do. Okay. I want to have one card, and I want to use it. Well, they're planning on uh, U.S. by the end of this year. They will have the cards rolling out uh, outside the United States already. So this is going to be a big year. Aren't they based in uh, Singapore? I don't know if they're based in Singapore or not. I well, they can be really based in Singapore, that. but they have... They already have partnerships with, with MasterCard and Visa, so, so I don't really so. know if it matters where they're based anymore. Um, moving on to more a local story here here in New Hampshire. Bitcoin oh, yeah. Deregulated. Yeah, we're totally it's no, it's totally deregulated. So, so not, 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 not really. Uh, there's uh, there was a bill a few years ago that uh, would have uh, that did I guess uh, do something weird with the money transmitter and say if you use Bitcoin you're kind of money transmitter. And so after that uh, law went into effect, uh, Poliniex was unavailable to people accessing Poliniex from New Hampshire and didn't use a VPN. And uh, <laughs> then uh, and so. Perhaps with this uh, uh, bill that should rescind those rules, uh, perhaps people in New Hampshire can now use Poloniex again. Oh, they can use Poloniex without having to use, use a, a VPN. VPN. Yeah. yeah, right. Well, that's I mean, good news for New Hampshire, and it's good news. The fact is that and it, we this, are this based. didn't this didn't just change a law. What it does is it, it provided an exemption. Yes. For for Bitcoin and virtual currencies. All right. Exempting them from the money transmitter regulations. Woo-hoo. Oh, I got to so start a business. I live in New Hampshire. We all live in New Hampshire, don't we? That's right. And uh, so I don't really have to start a business because my business is good right now. So, well, Yes, it is. In fact, your business is Dash, and we'll talk about that in just a second. That's it, right. The, uh, the This regulation, deregulation, goes into effect August 1st. So... Uh, maybe it's not time to celebrate just yet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Keep your VPN. But, but, but I believe it's up. been signed. It's, it's yes. signed. Oh, yes, so. right. So but there's just sort of like that period of like delay. Uh, yeah. But anyway, we have some Dash news, Darren. So this is what I think is big news, and it's a sign of things to come. So, um, so what has happened is BitCart, which is a service that originally started to accept Bitcoin and give you an, an Amazon gift card, now BitCart no longer sells Bitcoin, or no, no longer accepts Bitcoin. Excuse me, JJ. That's right. So, uh, so this is crazy. This is a company that started with Bit in their name. That's right. You know, <laughs> that no longer profound. accepts Bitcoin. And Maybe so, should, are um, they going to rename to Dash Cart? I don't know. I think they really should. You know, but um, now, now they're Dash only, though. They're yeah. So, so just a while ago, they announced that you can get a fifteen percent discount with uh, Bitcoin and a twenty percent discount with Dash. And I used it, and I was pretty. Uh, actually, they were flooded with transactions, so they were like a day or two late, but they totally got it to me, and it totally worked, and 20% off. That's pretty huge, right? Yeah. And uh, and I was like, why are people still using Bitcoin? But uh, now, if you want Amazon Bit card, or Amazon gift cards, you have uh, fewer options, or at least one fewer option. 
uh, and that is BitCart. So uh, if you would like to still use BitCart, uh, you need some Dash, and you give them Dash, and they give you a Amazon gift card. Yeah, so it's worked, and, and I'm, I'm I I am customer. I, sometimes I'm a little bit worried to talk about these things, and like I said, they were a little late, but they they seem to do what they say they're going to do. Uh, Joel just used them, and he said it was like uh, 20 minutes or 25 minutes. Excellent. Well, yep. Joel, actually, we are sourcing Joel's story from well, uh, Dash Force News yep. in, in this podcast. You can check it out yep. on our blog, neocashradio.com. Uh, it, it's interesting, the CEO, what he had to say here, Darren. Uh, we have one quote here. You can find more in Joel's article and, and elsewhere. But So this is the CEO of BitCart. That's right. He's saying that, uh, quote, from a merchant's point of view, Bitcoin is extremely problematic. The backlog is vast and transaction speeds are terribly slow. I had to wait three entire weeks to fill two customer orders, simply waiting on the Bitcoin network to clear. Bitcoin as a method of payment on BitCart is simply not sustainable and it's a nightmare from a merchant point of view. So he, he basically, he, he, he really likes Dash's instant send. You know, low fees, instant send, instant transaction settlement. I mean, and what merchant wouldn't like that? Yeah, it's, it's great. And even if you don't use it, it still confirms and... Uh and uh, you get your you get your gift card. Yeah. So, uh, Pedro, you got a you got a story here. What's uh, what what is your story? Sure. So, uh, Ethereum inventor Vitalik Buterin meets Russian President Vladimir Putin. So, uh, Vitalik Buterin had a brief conversation uh, with Va- Vladimir Putin at the end of a private CEO meeting, according to a public statement by Ethereum's inventor, who confirmed he spoke to the Russian president in what is likely the highest level meeting for this space. According to Russia's Free Press Secretary, after communication with CEOs of the largest corporations, the Russian president briefly communicated with the founder of Ethereum, Vitalik Buterin, who spoke about the possible use of blockchain technologies in the Russian Federation. The Russian president has supported the idea of establishing business contacts with possible Russian partners, the press secretary said. This is actually really big news. So this is something, Peter, I mean, I saw this article, I, I I'm, I've been very busy with uh, things I'm working on, but uh, I saw this, and just the title is like, "What alternate reality have I just entered into?" That's just—it's just the strangest thing, right? It I mean, is. It, I, I mean, I, I'm not aware that uh, Vitalik has, uh, you know, met with other, you know, world leaders. So I to don't speak. know, but but uh, well, here's the thing. I mean, when you, when you're meeting with business leaders, you know, from the Russian Federation or wherever. Uh, you know, you're already meeting with world leaders, so to speak. You know, these these people are leaders in in, in you know entrepreneurship and industry and, and things like that. And so it's it's uh, it's really huge, I think, for this sort of thing to be happening. And it, what I want to it show you or sort of illustrate is the difference of mentality of like, you know, some of these. We're going to talk a little bit more about Singapore later in the show, but but the fact that. You know, elsewhere in the world, the the leaders are more, more than willing to meet with with uh, these these developers and whatnot. Whereas here in the United States, you know, they're they're enacting these horrible laws and Ho- horrible laws. Know, they're, the there's... bit license. They're they're accusing them of all this black market stuff, rather than looking at all the the wonderful things you can create and all the the solutions you can have. It's just like fear mongering instead yeah. of instead of evolution. So. I mean, and, yeah. and it can really bring efficiencies to to economies like you know the Russian Federation, uh, the pre you know the former Eastern Bloc. You you've seen some of the uh, highest ambition projects. Was it Estonia that wants to do smart contracts to replace you know the, the way re- regular contracts are being kept there? So you see some of these uh, former um, you know co- communist countries that are really looking at efficiencies and. Um, and it's really good to see, and you know, there's a tr- tremendous potential for Ethereum, whether it's the public blockchain or or private uh, implementation of it, could really bring to uh, these economies. Well, Pedro, why don't you just go on to the next story you got there? Sure. Uh, so, Singaporean dollar uh, tokenized through Ethereum's blockchain by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. <laughs> this um, is another alternate reality like, story. What it's- happened? All right, so a, r- a report by the Monetary Authority of Singapore, uh, MAS, in collaboration with a number of banks and blockchain technology firms recently announced that phase one of tokenizing Singaporean dollars through an Ethereum blockchain has been successfully completed. Okay. The project connects current systems such as clearinghouses and processes running through MQ clients or other software such as MAS MEPS, um, which I, I'm not 
I don't have the details of it. It's one of their systems they use to, you know, to move funds around. Oh. And and they've done this on a on a private Ethereum blockchain. Uh, according to the report, there can be a number of benefits. The report says MAS can create atomic transactions for the first time for cross-border fixed income products with payments direct directly on central bank money. So it represents um, the central bank's money. And again, this is on the private, um, you know, Ethereum blockchain. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, there was news that some Irish banks have done similar things. Um, so this kind of leads into what's going on with the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, where they're looking to bring um, and investigate, you know, how can blockchain like uh, uh, Ethereum, which is a smart contract blockchain, what can it do to, um, you know, fintech, the financial industry, and and bring efficiencies and, you know, faster confirmations and such. Yeah. Oh, it's just like, once again... You know, instead of being like, oh, the black market, this is buying huge. drugs. No, they're like, well, let's embrace this This technology. is huge because if you're in Singapore and they have a tokenized private Ethereum, I think using the word Ethereum gets confusing, but private uh, Turing complete chain, then um, it should be easy to transfer your Singaporean tokens to the Ethereum tokens, at least you know, for a face-to-face -face transaction or something like that, because, or even online, because if somebody sends the Singaporean tokens and they're as secure as uh, Ether, right? Then you can send Ether back and not worry about double spend or anything like that. So that's a good, good idea. I mean, it's hard to uh, buy uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency with PayPal because the PayPal can be rescinded. But if if the Sin Singaporean token has the same property that Ethereum has, that it can't be rescinded, then right, no charge. Then now, now you've got a uh, a, a government currency, or they would call it sovereign currency, that can integrate with everything else. That's pretty right. cool. Really great. Uh, more Ethereum news here, and another uh, initial token offering that comes to you. And oh. speaking of banks, I know, I know, Darren doesn't like any of these. <laughs> I, I, I don't have time to go through them. That's the only reason I don't like them. So the Bancor protocol and smart tokens. You like tokens, right? You know, and smart contracts. Well, how about a smart token? Bancor will be launching with a token sale, distributing the Bancor Network token. Bancor reminds me of Prism, uh, the new service from Eric Voorhees. The idea behind it revolves around anyone being able to create smart tokens, as simply as that. Uh, you can use the tokens for any number of things, whether uh, you know your interlocal currency or um, uh, fundraising, any sort of thing like that. Uh, one particular uh, use of the tokens that caught my eye was basically you can creates these uh, decentralized EFTs. You can you can take a bank or a token and, and create a smart token and put inside that a bunch of other currencies. And then it, 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 from there, you, you basically spawn shares of this based on a reserve of, of whatever your reserve rate is. And so you can create a certain number of tokens. It, it's, it really gets deep. But the possibilities of putting tokens inside of tokens, and then someone who has that token, they can they can just burn it, get the tokens from inside at any point in time. So anytime you can you can interfa interface with this smart token and retrieve what's inside of it, or you can continue trading it as a as a package. I don't know. It's amazing it's stuff. Fun. Now it, it I, is I, amazing. It's just that goodness. It's gracious. so much. Now I've read their white paper, and let me tell you, yeah, I, it is a difficult. I mean, difficult thing you, to wrap you, your you mind know, around. It you know, a somebody's going to take make these. Uh, what are they called? The 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 the, the tokens. What are they called? They're the. The the basket token. What's that called? The the token inside a token. That's that's what this is. That's what this is. This, that's what somebody's this going is. to take that token that has tokens inside it and put it inside another yes. token. Yeah, no. and then put that inside another You're, token. That's like that's like it's like running will. a virtual yes. machine it's, inside it's, of a virtual machine. It's got to happen because everybody is really you know all you know when people understand what this is and start playing with it. That's going to happen. I mean, one time I forwarded my email at work to another email and then forward that back to mine and I almost made the whole thing blow up but um not literally but <laughs> I, I got a I got an email the next day that said I shouldn't do that and then uh yeah so somebody's gonna do this put a token inside token inside token inside token inside token and we're just gonna and then it's gonna take you're gonna have no gas left to to open up this token so now the the based off of this crowd sale, this is this is some interesting stuff, and I really encourage you to read the white paper. Of course, I'm not advising you to buy into this this token uh, sale or anything like that. It's just fascinating stuff. So what what happens here is is a portion of the token sale 
goes in and it, it uh, it's ether, so they collect ether, and so a portion of that ether is is backing the Bancor network token. It is held in smart contract, and there's a certain uh, reserve rate that is met with this ether as the backing, and it it really gets some. Yeah, some really interesting things. But one thing that they're really focusing on is the uh, the development of cross blockchain compatibility and really being able to uh, create a basket of tokens that not only will will work with most or any blockchain, but it also the tokens themselves are also compliant with um, various standards to to be used on multiple blockchains. So it's uh, some really fun stuff. So that that token sale is happening this week. Uh, on the 12th. And so, uh, once again, I'm not advising you to buy or sell anything. Uh, next up is sort of, well, we, we, we teased it at the beginning of the show, so you know we have uh, this story waiting for us. And we haven't talked about Bitcoin in a couple weeks. Isn't that right, Darren? That's right. So uh, there's, you know, sort of a reason why. Because we, I, the, the tagline when we started the show was the future of money. That's right. And it's pretty clear what the future is not going to be. Well, to me, at least the Bitcoin UASF community hard fork. Now, I don't care if the code hard forks at this point, the community has already hard forked. Now, and there is the you know what they say, JJ. What's that? When the community forks, the code will follow. Wow. They don't really say that. I made, it up. That's a, I made it up, but they deep. will say that because they'll listen to the show and they'll be like, yeah, he's pretty smart. Yeah, he's a pretty smart guy. That yeah. Dr. Tap. Yeah. So um, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> anyway. With the community forks, the code will follow. Yeah, that, that's, that's really a good, good quote. Yeah. Remember that. Okay. Uh, I will. I'll write that down right here. Okay, There's great. a current look at the health. Let's just first look at the health of the Bitcoin network before we go any further. The uh, The hash rate right now is 5.2 million terahashes with, with a difficulty of 679 billion. Which is a million. Which is amazing. It's just amazing. I remember when I was flabbergasted that the difficulty hit a billion. Right. So the mempool is hovering between 65 and 70 million bytes, or roughly 65 to 70 full blocks, and holds roughly uh, 50,000 transactions. Now, the blocks are averaging 99% full right now, and the mining rewards have risen and just shot up to $6.7 million per day. Now, that's including the block rewards for for, for creating the, the new blocks. But yesterday, I believe the... The mining, mining rewards without the block reward was $1.3 million. So uh, as far as signaling is concerned, Bitcoin Unlimited remains on top with 39.5% of the last 1,000 blocks, while Segwit has 32.4%. So there's an, it will have some links on our blog. I'm not going to really detail too much, write up much. You can read it for yourself. There's an, an interesting game theory of scenarios of what happens when this US, UASF uh, BIP 148 happens, and you can find that on our blog, a link to it. But there's a bunch of different paths now. Obviously, that who, who knows exactly what's going to happen? I don't. But there's a bunch of okay, if this in this scenario, this is what would happen in this scenario. And a lot of it, you know, a lot of it's stuff you might have heard on Neocash Radio if you listen to our show. Um, you know, the the basically he. he there's going to be a problem with the difficulty because one thing that this guy points out in his his uh, his, his scenarios that I think is is most interesting to note is that the difficulty won't because of the, the we just had an an adjustment basically or because of the way the adjustments are coming out that between August first and November fifteenth there may not be a difficulty adjustment made to the blockchain. And that's the time when SegWit activation needs 95% of the nodes. Now, the, the big issue is that if, if blocks are coming out 80 minutes apart or something to that effect, you know, that's how, I don't know if you're going to be able to, to uh, both compete in the hashing, re- in hashing power with whomever else wants to compete against SegWit, but also getting enough nodes... At ninety, you know, getting enough uh, signal nodes before the, you know, the difficulty adjustment, you know, points to some some problems here. So, it, you know, Segwit might not activate at all, even if they do the UASF, because they don't get the the activation. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, it this is one possibility. Like, they could do the U- UASF All right. and, and basically fork Bitcoin. All right, JJ. So let's, let's, let's break it down. So you're talking about the UASF, which is the User Activated Segregated Fork, which means that a bunch of people are going to be running their own nodes that have their own code. And at some point, they all agree that they're going to do something different than the rest of the network. So do they have a date pick, JJ? Is that what you're telling August me? August 1st. August 1st. Okay. So and, it, and it's probably based on block. So it's probabilistic around August 1st. So um, so it, if this happens, what's going to happen is the, the people that have deviated from the rest of the network, which you're allowed to do. I mean, it's, it's, this is not democracy. This is uh, independent action here. Um, the people that deviate from the rest of the network, they'll be running their own network with their own hashing power that kind of splits off of the other network. And, and then the people that keep running the same software there, they'll be at a separate network. Right. And then, uh, all the Bitcoin that existed before will exist in both networks and then they'll create new ones that won't exist in both. But, um, now this is going to be, um, well, JJ, yes, sir. The words I would use to describe this are not family friendly. No, no, they're not. And this is so, this is a clean show, sir. It is. It is so, totally. So what can cleaner minds or cleaner heads, clearer heads, what calmer would, heads? What would they say? What What could be a way to avoid all this? Not use Bitcoin. Yeah. That's probably, it. Probably I mean, just, I, we're not advising you to sell Bitcoin. <laughs> we're not definitely not advising you to hold it either. Well, I, I have a purchase I make every month with Bitcoin, and I'm, I'm like, I just want to buy the thing I'm buying. And, I mean, it's a, I rent it, so I have to pay every month. And... Now, even with the high fee, now even, I don't even know what I'm going to do, JJ. It's, it's just, and I know this stuff, and I'm just like. Well, here's the thing, Darren. You're you're working for Dash now. That basically. is right. So I think I think you've moved your ball to a different court already. I, I totally have. and um, Darren took his ball and went home. Yeah, I, took yeah. My, I totally, t- I did, it was a while ago. It was Mike Kern did his blog post and stuff like that. I, I took no, my you, ball. You, you, we, we had a Neocache, we had a couple of Neocache radio episodes where we were talking about this transition you were making. From the Bitcoin Baron to the dash something baron. else. The I dash. don't know what it is. I mean, you were, you were, I am going to be, you were the dash floating baron. for a little while. I am totally, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I, I didn't know what the answer was going to be. So I was like, I better look at hedge, this. Hedge your bet. Yeah, I hedged. And I mean, there are some good cryptos out there, but you are not the token guy and in I am the not, show. I have some tokens. No, I'm not saying that you're, but I just think they're coming out so quick. They and, are. And, and I really think it, I'm not advising anybody to buy or sell, of course. But I really think if you're thinking about buying these tokens, you really should read stuff that would take me about two months to read. There's well, and that's the thing is some of these tokens coming out, some of these uh, ICOs, uh, token generating events, whatever you want to call them. There's very little info. Yeah, and, and like the the one we mentioned where Vitalik, he probably did read, you know, two months worth of stuff. Well, Vitalik was one of the but, initial founders of 10x, one of the initial investment founders. Yeah, so founders. maybe not, maybe they know what they're not doing. Not a founder, but like but, an investment. You know, I don't want to take Vitalik's word for it, even though I really respect him and I think he's got a really great brain. Uh, uh, you're great, Vitalik. I'm, uh, thank you for listening to the show. Um, but, yeah, of course he's listening. <laughs> of course I, Vitalik I, 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 listens I don't to know. He's a good guy. I met him. Um, I met him a few times. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I met him when he was in Canada before all this Ethereum stuff happened. It was pretty cool. We actually went to Canada and saw him. Um, but anyway, so uh, I just I think all these tokens are coming out and they're coming out at a at a clip that I can't keep up with them. And so yes, I am an old crankety. Blah, I'm saying blah, JJ. I don't I don't know. Blah, I just That's don't fine. know. It's good that and, it's good for us to have that stabilizing and, rudder. And, and here we're doing a show where people are listening to us, and so I have no idea. So I just say, color me skeptical because I'm I'm just like signaling, hey, don't get crazy, you know. Um, uh, yeah, I recommend that you not be crazy. That's good. Um, but yeah, don't get don't get too happy about all these things because uh, who knows, you know, just like Jis said, but. Keep those funds in reverse. <laughs> That's right. Because there ain't no telling when those funds will go in reverse. But anyway. Um, so, you know, the conclusion of all this is that it's going to be an excellent learning experience to see how the decentralized democracy sort of works. If this is that. Now, you know, I am so I, I also, excited to be a customer of these tokens. Darren, I want to be their customer. Darren, do you remember when we first talked about Blockstream? Oh, way, way back. Yeah. Way, way back when we first talked about Blockstream, JJ basically said something to the effect of it seems like a way for Blockstream to co-op the Bitcoin network and make them use their protocol 
make you have to opt into the Blockstream protocol to get your transaction on the network. Right. And so there's been some more of these conspiracy theories, if you wish to call them that, or more of these uh, cogent, uh, well reasons and, and profit driven uh, reasons why. Do you Blockstream. know why? Uh, you know what other people would call it, JJ? What's that? A social hack. Social hack. It's Bitcoin is socially hacked. Some That's people right. might say that. Yeah, and I, I honestly think there isn't as much support for the US UASF as people claim. In fact, those all those fake nodes that are firing up right now are just someone buying server time. And I think that a lot of the noise being generated, especially on Reddit, and maybe that's one of the only places, is is basically a handful of trolls and maybe sock puppets. So yeah, I I think that the it's it's just like the the intelligence yep. agencies would do to change a political opinion, is they would just create this overwhelming mass of news of a contrary opinion and make it seem like it's it's favorable and popular well, when it, in fact it isn't. I'm you know JJ I might fire up some dash nodes. Oh, I mean no. some some uh, Bitcoin nodes. You might because I want to do some testing. I want to know how this thing works, and so I I might actually fire up some Bitcoin nodes. Just to, you know, see how they're talking back to forth to each other, how quickly they can transfer the blocks and stuff like that. I mean, this, some of this research have already been done, but I think I'm going to – there could be a few Bitcoin nodes that are my fault. Okay. And, Excellent. And I don't – have, pop, have popcorn ready. And I show. make uh, no no apologies for that. But, uh, I mean, they'll just be normal. They won't have any special software unless it's, like, to re- measure stuff. So, so August 1st might be interesting. Well, yes, definitely. I think, and it's, it's so I got to get my test done before really just, August first. That's what you're telling me. Yeah, because okay. I don't want to be testing all this weird stuff going on. No, don't you want to be watching the weird stuff? I, in real I, time? That's fine. I just want my test to be like in okay, a controlled yes. environment. Yes, you definitely want to do that. Yeah, soon. Yeah, so, very so, soon. I mean, other people have already done tests, and you can read about them, and they're really great. There's a really great uh, article I keep going back to by this Peter guy. He, uh, it's on on massive blockchain scaling and i think there's a lot of good articles written out there and for whatever reason the core team of bitcoin core team is not looking at them well there i you know i I, i'm not going to speculate any more about their motivations i just think that uh there are less people pro their side than uh is represented by the media and news and such Anyway, uh, we're, we've got to go. This has been a show. This has been our 100, 210th show, Neocash Radio. That's a lot of shows. So uh, thank you for joining us here in the studio. With you, it's JJ. It's Darren. And it's Pedro. For Neocash Radio. We discuss the future of money today. Wow. Check out our blog at neocashradio.com. Wow. Wow.